chapter where we're gonna talk about negative keyword lists. Now, negative keyword lists are not a new concept, they're just a new way of implementing negative keywords. Um, and the point of lists is to create collections of negative keywords that you wanna reuse for multiple campaigns. So you don't have to keep adding the same negative keywords to campaign to campaign to campaign. The most um, popular form of list that I suggest that you all create right away is what I call an account irrelevant, okay? Um, and you can label it as such. Account irrelevant, uh, the, the, your account irrelevant negative keyword list is gonna consist of negative keywords that you never wanna show up for. So let's say you're popping, um, a good example of that is free and probably a lot of you will have that and maybe it's gonna be Amazon um, and maybe it's gonna be um, ebook or maybe it's gonna be downloads. It's, if you're, if, if you know, if uh, for example, one of our clients is AMC television networks, and that's often confused with AMC movie theaters. So you might want, for us, an account irrelevant would be like theater, or tickets, or showtimes. Well, showtimes could be relevant, so that might be a campaign or ad group. Um, or popcorn, right? So like a lot of the, you have to think about all the terms that might trigger searches for similar named products. Um, another list that's very popular is competitor. Now you might choose to have competitor campaigns, but you might choose to not have competitor campaigns. Uh, there are cases where a competitor campaign makes sense to advertise on your competitor terms. So if you're, for example, Microsoft, you might wanna have Apple as a negative keyword, or you might choose if somebody searches for MacBook Pro to show an ad for the Windows uh, Surface Book or something like that. So and and. I always suggest testing competitor campaigns, but you might choose to have a competitor list and you have all your negative keywords of competitors and you could apply them to all your campaigns. Um, you might have a list of specific brands. You might have a specific list of models as a negative keyword list. Um, and I would suggest keeping these negative keyword lists as um, organized as possible. You could have a whole bunch of them and it's always good to be able to look at your list of negative keyword lists and know what's in them and which campaigns they're applied to purely for the sake of organization. Now, remember, the only use of negative keyword lists is not necessarily account irrelevant terms, right? Say we're popping, for example, and we have a negative keyword list that's gonna be applied to all our chair campaigns, right? So for example, let's say we end up creating multiple desk chair campaigns and you know, let's say, let's say we, we don't sell dinosaur chairs but we do sell dinosaur desks or something. Or um, we don't sell, uh, for let's say, let's say we don't sell uh, wood chairs but we do sell wood desks, right? So these wouldn't be account irrelevant terms but instead of having to add them manually to every individual campaign, I could have one shared negative keyword list and apply this negative keyword list to all my chair campaigns. Let's say I have, you know, let's say these are broken out by match type or their chair campaigns for different types of chairs or for different, uh, different locations or different budgets or different hours of the day, right? Whatever it may be, you might have, your, again, you have your campaign broken out by many, in many different dimensions and you might have similar structured campaigns for similar top level product categories. So now, as I add another keyword to this list, Let's say I add a keyword um, cheap, right? Because let's say I don't sell cheap chairs, but I do sell cheap accessories. So I don't want, I don't want cheap to be an account irrelevant because I know that I want to show up for the search for cheap office accessories. But if I add cheap, then, all, then automatically, if this, if this negative keyword list was already applied to one, two, three, four campaigns, then cheap will be applied as a negative keyword to all four campaigns right away. And all I need to do is add it once to my list instead of having to add it one, two, three, four times to each individual campaign. That's the power of negative keyword lists. It's the best way of using keywords. I try to make sure my team and I don't add keywords at the campaign level. If it just gets too messy. We add keywords at the ad group level for the sake of sculpting and you add keywords to lists and then apply those lists to campaigns. It's the best and most efficient way of keeping track of all your negative keyword lists. Let's jump into Google Ads and let me show you how to create and manage negative keyword lists in Google Ads. So here we are back in Google Ads and there's a couple ways that you could get to your negative keywords. I tend to click GT on my keyboard. So if I click GT, it pulls up a shortcut and I can start typing in negative keywords and I see negative keyword lists and I can click on that and I go to my negative keyword list. I already created an account irrelevant. I can edit it. 
Um, I could edit the name, I could save it. I could also delete it by selecting it and edit, click remove. And now it's removed and we can start from scratch. As you can see here in this uh, Google Ads account, there are no negative keyword lists yet. So I'm gonna go ahead and create the most important one, which are my account irrelevant. And I know that my account irrelevant is gonna be applied to all the campaigns in my account. So account irrelevant, and I'll have things like free, uh, books, images, in store, near me, uh, local, um, DIY for do it yourself, Ikea, right? A lot of these are things that we added at the campaign level previously, but they should be added to lists. And I'll save that as my account irrelevant list. And now I wanna go ahead and apply to campaigns. Just by saving your negative keyword list does not mean it's applied to a campaign. As you could see over here, um, this, has, this list has nine keywords on it, but it's not applied to any campaigns yet. So we go ahead and apply to campaigns by selecting it by the checkbox and then clicking apply to campaigns. If we apply to campaigns, we'll get a window of all the campaigns we have that we could apply to. I'll select it. Um, if I had multiple campaigns, I could, add, I could add this negative keyword to multiple campaign, campaigns and click apply. Now that I've created my negative keyword list, I could add keywords to my negative keyword list directly from the search terms report. So let's go back to the search terms report. But before we go to the search terms report, I wanna show you one more way to get to your negative keyword lists. And if we go back to our campaign overview and we go over to tools in the top menu, we can go over to shared library and click on negative keyword lists over here and get be brought back to the same exact page. And over here, we would see a list of the same one. So if I added, um, Let's say office chairs, negatives, and I had things like um, cheap on it, and I had things like what you know dinosaur, and wood, um, and metal. Let's say I don't sell metal chairs, but I do sell metal pens or, or or metal file cabinets, whatever it is. That would be a negative keyword for all my office campaigns. I could save that, and I would see my whole list over here. Um, let's go to the search terms report and let me show you how to add keywords to the negative keyword lists directly from the search terms report. So I'm going to click GT and I could go to search terms or I can go back to my campaign overview, go into my campaign, go to keywords and then go to search terms. It would land me over here on search, on search keywords originally. I can navigate over to search terms um, and look, take a look at my search terms report. So say I'm going through and I say, uh, restoration hardware office chair. Restoration hardware is a competitor. They sell office chairs that are much more expensive in a distinctly different style. Even if they were in the same price range, I would still want to add restoration hardware as a negative keyword because I know restoration hardware and it's a very, it's a much more traditional style office chair, let's say, than the colorful modern workplace office chairs that pop in sells. So I'm gonna go over here and click, and I want that to be an account negative. We don't sell anything that's like restoration hardware stuff. So I want anybody who searches for rest restoration hardware in their search term to not be shown an ad for Poppin. I do not wanna spend money on that click. So I'm gonna select add as negative keyword, and now we could select negative keyword list directly from the search terms report window. So instead of doing it at the campaign level like we did in the past, we're gonna keep things organized and, and add it to the negative keyword list and I'm gonna add it to my account irrelevant list. Over here, I could choose from a list of all my negative keyword lists. So I'm gonna choose account irrelevant and I'm going to click save. But we only did the exact match variation. I wanna also do the broad match variation. So I'm gonna keep it selected, click add negative keyword again, go to negative keyword list and just take out the brackets and office chair. So I have broad match restoration hardware without the brackets. I'm on my account irrelevant list, click save. And if we do GT, go to negative keyword lists, we'll see 11 keywords now on this account relevant list. I can go into it. And here's where I could edit out keywords from that list. So let's say I decided I wanted near me to not be an account relevant anymore. I select the keyword I wanna remove from the negative keyword list, click edit, click remove, and then it's gone. Once these keyword lists get bigger and bigger, you're gonna potentially wanna download it. You could filter out um, different keywords that you're looking for. You could say match type keyword text and to, to analyze it, um, we have keywords, we have negative keyword lists and accounts that are thousands and thousands and thousands of negative keywords long. Um, and sometimes we'll download it. Say we'll, we'll be like, you know, a client will ask us, are we excluding search terms for paper? Or are we, are we including search terms for um, this brand? And you know, it might be difficult to look at all the search terms we're excluding. So we'll download that into Excel. We'll run a function to find certain things um, and then we could upload it back um, or we could just find them in the account and remove them from there. So that's a basic overview of negative keyword lists how to use them, when to use them, the concept of that account irrelevant negative keyword list, which is really important, but then also lots of other negative keyword lists that could be applied to either one campaign or multiple campaigns.
And you could always edit the campaigns they're applied to. So if you go scroll down here, once you're in the negative keyword list, you'll see that it's applied to one campaign. I could select the campaign name and remove list from selective campaigns. And now that negative keyword list that I'm under, which is up here in the left-hand corner, account irrelevant, is no longer applied to that campaign. Um, I could go ahead and again and click apply to campaigns, apply it to my campaign, click done, and now it's reapplied to my campaign. So you could really edit these things easily. You could edit the negative keywords. You could add negative keywords to them. You could also add negative keywords to a list directly from here by clicking the blue plus sign and adding a ne negative keyword. Um, so let's say I wanted to add a, add a negative keyword Costco. Click save. I could edit from this window as well. And it's really, really flexible way of managing negative keywords in your account. As your account scales, this pop-in account could potentially have 50 search campaigns. Each of these 50 search campaigns could easily have five to 10 ad groups. And using campaign level negative keyword lists, account irrelevant negative keyword lists, and then ad group negative keywords for sculpting is the best way to manage. My best advice for you, the takeaway here is try to avoid individual campaign level, level negative keywords as much as possible because you could typically use negative keyword lists instead. And they're typically, it's, it's gonna be a much, much more efficient better way to organize your negative keywords as you scale and keep track of them. So um, my suggestion as an exercise is if you haven't done this already, create an account irrelevant negative keyword list. Use some of the research tools for negative keywords like Google Suggests, uh, Google Suggestions, Related Searches, Suvel, your search engine report, and start adding account irrelevant negative keywords with the right match types to your negative keyword lists. I will see you guys very soon in the next lecture when we're moving on to the next topic and getting deeper into different keyword research for positive keywords, different techniques that we could use. I look forward to seeing you guys in a couple seconds on the other side.